I'm going to ask Marcy to start with alliances. So, well, I'm glad you started. Maybe I'll just pick this up here. Okay. <laughs> stand up if you want. Walk back and forth. Yeah, well, I'm short, but I like to sit. <laughs> um, so, so uh, actually, Ron, that was a good introduction to what I want to what I want to begin with, which is that Americans have kind of gone back and forth on the question of alliances and getting involved in what's happening in other countries and, and around the world. And that really dates back to the very beginning of our country. Uh, Thomas Jefferson famously warned the, the new citizens of the United States of America not to get involved in entangling in alliances and all the conflicts and ongoing problems in Europe. But at the same time, we have to remember that our alliance with France, which was negotiated by no other, none other than Benjamin Franklin, was an important reason why we won the Revolutionary War, because the British were keeping us from getting any war supplies, and the French were helping us get around that. So uh, with that as uh, background, I'm going to skip over, and I'm gonna, because, because we don't have that much time, I'm going to talk mainly about the NATO alliance, which is the alliance that we have, we in Canada, uh, are tied together with Europe in the NATO alliance, which was formed just after the end of World War II as uh, a piece of a strategy that included the Marshall Plan for uh, the rehabilitation of Europe. So it, uh, it, really, it, really it really started off actually in a period in which Americans were skeptical about the benefits of and tired really didn't want, you know, really didn't want to be so involved in ongoing problems in Europe. But on the other hand, there was the feeling that if uh, something weren't done to jumpstart the economy and to keep the United States involved, that we might very well have war again. So the, I think we would have to say that, um, and the alliance was also formed uh, because of the Soviet Union. To counter the Soviet Union, to counter communism, uh, and uh, to be our source of strength during the Cold War. So bottom line, it worked. The Cold War stayed cold. The Soviet Union fell apart. We, uh, can, we can attribute some of that to our having an, an alliance. So after all that happened, those, those countries which were now independent and previously had been so-called satellites or behind the Iron Curtain, all joined NATO, uh, including the Baltic states. And we even started a forum for discussion with the Russians. So that was, um, then there a feeling set in, okay, well, what, do we still need this? Is this alliance still important to us? One sort of parenthetical here that I think is important to say, which is that NATO does not have its own army. Um, NATO's forces are composed of a sort of plug and play situation where there's a commander who's an American and each country offers up certain military formations that can be called upon if they are needed. So the magic number 2% is actually how much each country spends on their military. So we want all the countries to spend 2% of their gross national product, their gross domestic product, sorry. Those of you who are economists are gonna get me on this. So, <laughs> of their gross domestic product on, uh, on military, on keeping up their military. So they then have uh, assets that they can give to NATO to, to use in, in need. So coming up now to um, the end of the Obama administration, we had the Russians uh, annex Crimea and get involved in Ukraine, in Georgia, and, and that, that rush of good feeling was really dissipating fast. Uh, coming into this administration, we had a president who said, hmm, well, maybe NATO's just obsolete. And uh, anyway, those Europeans are not doing their share. His first uh, telephone calls with NATO members, with, their, with our close allies, were, were tough. When they had their first meeting together, it was not, 
a warm and friendly uh, gathering, the president lectured them all that they really needed to do better. But since that time, we have, you can see sort of a continuum of change that's happened uh, since that time. First of all, uh, more than half of the members of NATO have now promised that they're, gonna, they're definitely going to do more. Uh, the president has said, well, so maybe, maybe NATO isn't obsolete after all. And the Russians have actually made uh, their own contribution to this by their own bad behavior, in fact. Uh, we have seen in Europe, or the Europeans have woken up to the fact that the Russians are bankrolling uh, certain political parties, they are manipulating the media. In the Balkans, uh, they were behind a sort of a fake coup attempt, just generally um, engaging in activities that seem to be aimed at dividing the U.S. from our European partners and the Europeans from each other. And in the face of all that, then uh, people have reacted by reaching back to the, uh, those alliance ties and what can we do together that will make sure that we don't have uh, the Russians actually threatening our own membership and most especially the Baltic states. So the U.S. has also, for our part, done more. We've given heavy equipment to Ukraine. We've given more dollars to NATO. And, and we've been tougher on the Russians. We've, uh, we've leveraged sanctions on them. We, uh, we reacted very sharply to the poisoning of the um, actually double agent in, uh, in the UK, where we joined the Europeans and um, British in, uh, in uh, throwing out, actually, Russian diplomats. And in Syria, uh, where we have um, the Russians supporting a government that uses chemicals against its, against its own people. We had uh, an action there that was definitely strengthened by the fact that the French and the British went with us. So you can, we have had kind of an evolution in our, um, in our attitudes toward the alliance and also our commitments. So, so where are we now? Um, we are definitely in a position of uh, doing more in the alliance and doing more with our partners. But I think there remains a sense of uncertainty about how, how long will this last and how strongly do the Americans really feel about that. So uh, a, a little bit of a tentativeness. So we're going to have to, we'll have to see, and the, there's a, NATO summit in July, which will be a big moment when, when we get together with our allies and look at all the major problems that we have uh, in, in Europe, in the United States, but also in the world, and discuss what we might do together. Then we'll get a better sense of where we're going to be going forward with the, with the NATO alliance. Marcy, thank you. That was perfect. And you know, this issue of confidence is as important in allied relations as it is in personal relations. It takes a long time to build confidence as it does with a friendship. Once you call it into doubt, it's not so easy to instantly remake it just because you change your mind. But you might still need the partner. <laughs>